wash it down like this, uh, it'll be a little different, but it won't last very long. Car star Shine Brightly in Hollywood will take you to the banquet for a second coronation of Target Ganassi Racing. Go ahead, help your friends to the TV. RPM tonight is next. At the Rock, we quote a rock star, Billy Joel. There's a storm front coming, and boy, did it hit Rockingham, North Carolina, the AC Delco 400 awash. We'll go to the North Carolina Motor Speedway for an update in just a bit. Hi there, glad to have you with us on RPM tonight. I'm Reese Davis. The Winston Cup schedule has been shuffled if Mother Nature cooperates, and we'll do a little drag racing. But number one on the rundown, F1, the Grand Prix of Europe. And one was the operative number. Just one point separated Michael Schumacher and Jacques Villeneuve in the Drivers' Championship standings with one race left. The blood was bubbling. Villeneuve went after Schumacher's teammate, Eddie Irvine, after Saturday's qualifying, claiming Irvine tried to block him. Irvine certainly did so in Japan, helping Schumacher to the win, and had promised to do it again if he had the opportunity. F1 had stepped in and threatened severe sanctions against anyone who deliberately wrecked a competitor to be settled in Perez. There is the Schumacher machine, two-time world champion, looking for his third title in four years. Villeneuve trying to become the first Canadian to win the championship. They're side by side on the grid. Villeneuve, your pole center on the right side, and that is Schumacher on the left, the other half of row one. The great start, and they're off. The red Ferrari, the prancing horse, was bolting to the front, jumping out front of Villeneuve, Schumacher leading the way. Still on the opening lap, Heinz Harold Frenzen goes down low and takes second away from Villeneuve. But as we saw in Japan with Schumacher and Irvine, teamwork again. This time between Frenzen and Villeneuve, Frenzen lets Jack get around him and take second place. Move ahead to lap 22, Schumacher, the race leader, in for a quick pit stop. Schumacher back out of there running in fourth place. After that, it's time for Villeneuve to go to the pits and time for the Williams team to get to work on his machine. Try to get him back in there and try to reel in Schumacher. Jock out of there in fourth place. Schumacher just ahead. Schumacher regains the lead. He's up by two seconds on Villeneuve and his car was looking very, very strong. Would it be time for Jock to make a move? The pressure is really on him now. For him to get by Michael, he needs a major problem for Michael's car, I'm afraid. That is Derek Bell getting it done because on lap 47, Villeneuve down low and Schumacher. Oh, naughty, naughty. Tries to wreck him. Villeneuve goes on, but Schumacher is done. We're on board with Schumacher and maybe just one of those racing deals, who knows, but he wrecked. Reminiscent of what happened in 1994 in Australia. Schumacher, Damon Hill battling for the title and Michael gets into him. He wrecks him, nearly flips him, ended up winning the title as a result by one point. This year, the title would go to Damon Hill's former teammate. The final lap, Jack has the lead, but said his car was having steering problems, handling problems, after that little bump, and Mika Hockenden goes by him, and so does Hockenden's teammate, David Coulthard, the McLaren Mercedes, going to the finish line and taking the checkered flag to finish 1-2, but Villeneuve, who finished third, Oh, yes, male bonding. Let's have some male bonding. Jack Villeneuve is the driver's champion. Mika Hockenden gets his first Grand Prix win. Coulthard second, Villeneuve third. Gerhard Berger was fourth. Schumacher's Ferrari made Irvine was fifth. In just his second season, Villeneuve wins his first driver's championship. A daring move and some good fortune to escape damage from Schumacher's body shot gives Villeneuve the crown. We came here one point behind. The pressure was high. Uh... We had to fight back. We're the, we were the underdog, basically, and uh, that's always been the best position uh, for us to fight from. Oh, Michael Schumacher has got a screamer. He's got past Villeneuve. I don't know how he managed to make a start because uh, it was very slippery, and I had a lot of wheel spin, even though it wasn't a bad start, and Michael just, just took off uh, like a rocket. He's still clocking in good times, but he's not making any impression on Michael. And Michael's got this 5.2 second lead at the moment. The maker was actually quite good, and as, as you saw, I, I was able to, to stay up front him all the time. It was initially the period, the first, I'd say, five laps on new tyres, where he was a bit stronger than me, but then I was up front and I, I knew I can, uh, can, keep behind, uh, can keep him behind me. Still a lot of motor racing left this afternoon. 
But is there enough time for Villeneuve to get the job done? I was pushing all the way. It was a very tough race. I, I just couldn't get closer to him until we got to the newer tires. I just couldn't seem to catch him. And, you know, it was becoming a physical race also because it was qualifying laps the whole way through. Villeneuve went down the inside. Michael left it very late. He literally drove into the side of Villeneuve. When he turned in on me, we banged wheels and I jumped in the air and I really thought I'd broken the car. He uh, rode a kind of uh, very optimistic attack which it worked for him, it didn't work for me, but uh, that's, that's about racing. I wasn't really surprised when he final, si finally decided to turn in on me. Uh, it was a little bit expected, so uh, you know, I knew I was taking a big risk. Michael Schumacher has lost at this point the 97 Drivers World Championship. We believe we have enough reasons to be happy with the performance we, we showed this year because uh, as a team, we have uh, been, in my view, the number one team in, in the whole Formula One world. Jack Villeneuve has won the 1997 Drivers' World Championship. The championship feels great now. It's been an up and down uh, season. We've been the most competitive uh, team since the end of the season. I just uh, actually want to say that congratulations to him because he, he did a very good season. Well, this has been a roller coaster thing throughout the season, but it's been very, very close between Villeneuve and Schumacher. Villeneuve collecting two more wins, but one more not classified. Very similar to 94. Schumacher won the championship by point over Damon Hill. You saw the wreck with Hill in Australia during the highlights. The difference, Villeneuve survived the crash, and he went on to win the title, and that time Schumacher won it. With more on the Grand Prix of Europe, here's Jonathan Green. Well, the celebration's just getting underway here in Arev, Spain, as Williams once again claim another world championship, and Jack Villeneuve is the new world champion of Formula One. We said they might come together with Michael Schumacher, and that's exactly what happened, but Michael came out worse this time, and Jack Villeneuve is the new world champion. Certainly Patrick Head, who's uh, toiled, if you like, with Jack Villeneuve all season, was well pleased with the result, and the way the Williams gave a great farewell to Renault engines. Very pleased for Renault. They, they've had a fantastic... Uh, run in Formula One and uh, the reliability of their engine is absolutely second to none and uh, I'm very very impressed. We saw today that the cars were very similarly matched, very similarly matched and uh, the difference today was the driver. I mean how many times have we seen Michael lauded as uh, a, god amongst, uh, a god amongst men? Well today he was definitely second best. I don't think anybody could accuse Jack of winning the race by virtue of knocking Michael out. Uh, Jack won the race by overtaking him, and unfortunately, looks like Michael made a mistake. The day, of course, belonged to Mercedes and the McLaren team. Mika Hakkinen taking his first victory ever in his career in Formula One, and that was cause for big celebrations for him. Coming to the last, last couple of laps, it's pretty incredible. It was one of the Jordans, Jordans front of us, and, and uh, Jack was there, and, and always Davis was front of me, and uh, I would say it was, from my side, it was fantastic. So much has improved during this year, and to finish so close, uh, you know, the top six even in this last race, it just shows how competitive Formula One is. And you know, I'm, I'm happy to have won two of the races this year. I think a clean race, a race that uh, obviously could have gone many ways. I'm glad we weren't involved in the incident that decided the World Championship. I'm equally glad to have a one-two. It's been uh, around eight, seven years, and we're waiting for this. And to, I think to win in that condition, has been pushing very hard. Tim did an absolutely fantastic job. It's been a long, hard Formula One season, but in the end, it was Jack Villeneuve who took the championship and Mercedes and McLaren who won the day. All right, Jonathan, you know a word to Villeneuve's team guys wearing those yellow wigs? Easy on the Clairol, fellas. You don't all have to do it. No Williams driver has ever won back-to-back -back driver's championships, despite the fact that Villeneuve's the second Williams driver to win. Damon Hill doing it last year would mean an individual driver. Villeneuve capturing the title as late father Gilles unable to win. Schumacher finishes three points back. Alessi in the top five for the fourth straight year. Well, last week in Dallas, Corey McLenathan ran better than 321 miles per hour, fastest speed ever in top fuel drag racing. Friday night, Chuck Etchell set the funny car standard, topping out at 3.15 and change. How fast is too fast? That's the question the NHRA will address as testing starts in hopes of slowing cars back to the 300 miles per hour range. Airflow restrictions and engine compression limits will be the initial focus. Still full power, though, at the Matco Nationals in Houston. Top fuel first round, Gary Selzy against Tony Schumacher. Selzy's in the far lane. Selzy is going to beat his competitor down the track, but whoa! Both of them are on fire. Funny car, first round. Watch Chuck Etchell's in the far lane, and... Oh, ho, ho. well, he's on fire way too soon. Blew the body right off that car. Take another look as he hits the gas, and... Whoops! 
don't think the bodies are supposed to do that. Also, in Funny Car, I want you to keep your eye on Jim Eckler. Jim Eckler over there on the far side, and there is Eckler, and suddenly he's driving along, and he's got himself a convertible. Oh, for half the price. One more look. You think as Jim Eckler was okay as he was driving his dune buggy convertible after that. And he comes down, everything was okay there. He got out and was not hurt. But then the rain would come. We, we had a lot of rain in racing on Sunday. And they will finish up the second round in the semifinals tomorrow in Houston. Still ahead on RPM tonight, Alex Sinardi, Chip Ganassi celebrating Hardy Ganassi's second straight car championship at the banquet. And we're living a super trap song. It's raining again at the Rock. We're back at this. RPM Tonight is being brought to you by Ace Hardware. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware folks. And by Shell, moving at the speed of life. Now, back to Reese Davis. They call the rock a hard place. It was more like a wet place. North Carolina Motor Speedway better suited to Dennis Conner racing for the America's Cup and Jeff Gordon racing for the Winston Cup. The AC Delco 400 postponed until 10 a.m. Eastern Monday morning. We sent Bill Weber out there to gather two of every kind of race car driver for this report. After dodging nasty weather most of the season on Sunday, NASCAR was forced to postpone a Winston Cup event for the second time in four races and the third time this season. This time it was the AC Delco 400 here at the North Carolina Motor Speedway in Rockingham. The race rescheduled for Monday, but the weather forecast for Monday isn't very good either. We're hoping that will change. We know the racetrack already has changed. You're going to see the track conditions change a lot as the race goes on, and that's why we've got to set our car up to be real adjustable to, to go, you know, a couple different ways. I, I think, you know, it might start off a little loose and get real, real tight uh, towards the end of the race. The track is clean as clean can be because the rain washed everything off, so it will change that aspect of it. But halfway through the race, it'll be back like it was last night. Uh, after half the hour's practice, you sort of knew what you expect, so you might make a few changes that you can change during the course of the race. You won't go make major changes to adjust for this because after about 150 miles, 200 miles into this race, it'll be back like it was last night. You've got to decide if the track's going to be tight or loose, and, and you probably won't be able to run as long on the first couple runs as you thought you could yesterday. Uh, all the rubber's gone off the track. Uh, that means that all the grooves that were filled in are now not filled in, and it's going to wear the rubber out a lot quicker. A guy that was maybe off Yesterday in practice, he may find his car to be perfect for a while today, but then it may it'll sooner or later go back the way it was yesterday. One thing that won't change when they drop the green flag, Jeff Gordon will continue to chase his second NASCAR Winston Cup championship. He's a two-time winner here at Rockingham. The car he has for this race is running pretty well. We weren't the fastest car on new tires, but uh, we're working real hard on trying to save the tires and run good on a long run. And uh, I felt like we were as good as anybody, uh, at least most. I think the Pontiacs are really, really strong, especially the 18. Bobby Labonte will start from the pole here at Rockingham, and he might actually benefit from the postponement of this race. His team tested at this track when it was very green, quite similar to the conditions this field hopes to race on come Monday. At the North Carolina Motor Speedway, I'm Bill Weber in Rockingham, North Carolina. Bill, thank you very much. Jeff Gordon has a 110-point lead with three races left. Can Mark Martin or Dale Jarrett catch the 24? That's the question NASCAR Online asked the fans. Most aren't ready to engrave Gordon's name on that trophy just yet. 62% say he can be caught, perhaps mindful that Gordon gave up 110 points in one race last year at Charlotte. Or maybe just a lot of Martin and Jarrett fans were surfing the net that day. Remember, this poll is not scientific. Perhaps just Martin and Jarrett fans enjoyed clicking their mouse on that particular occasion. We've got Alex Zanardi. He won Tark Ganassi's second straight title and celebrated at a bank. The work, the effort, the time, the, the sweat, the agony that goes into this business. The checkered flag waves over Alex Zanardi, looking more and more like a champion in 1997. It's my honor to present the PPG Cup to the man who brought the donuts. And those were some of the sights and sounds of the kart season Saturday night. The sound was clinking silverware. The sight, Target Ganassi celebrating his second straight kart title. Alex Zanardi hoisting the PPG Cup this time 
at the Carp Postseason Banquet in Los Angeles. Marlo Klain was there. Alex Zanardi smoked his competition on the track this season with a series high five wins. So it was only appropriate in a cloud of smoke, he was officially introduced as the kart champion on Saturday night in Los Angeles. Zanardi joined Jacques Villeneuve as the only drivers to be rookie of the year and champion in consecutive years. It's the time where we finally get uh, the sweet taste of our, of our achievement and, uh, you know, it's up to me to go up there and, and talk on behalf of the old team, but I don't feel I want it just by myself. The work, the effort, the time, the, the sweat, the agony that goes into this business, and uh, it, it, to, to, to all culminate on an evening like this and be honored by my peers is, uh, I'm without words, really. Zanardi's closest competition came from second place finisher Gilles DeFerrin. DeFerrin's season was marked by the consistency that nearly won him a championship without a trip to the winner's circle. It was a very positive season for us. I mean, the finishing second is nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, obviously, you, sometimes you think back, you think what it could have been, etc., etc. But overall, it was a great year for us. I mean, you, you cannot forget that that was the first year that we had together in the Walker Racing Team. Patrick Carpentier claimed the Rookie of the Year award. Despite missing the last three races of the year due to injury, his season was highlighted by a second place finish at the Motorola 300, the best finish in the history of Bettenhausen Motorsports. It's good for me, you know, it's a good accomplishment. That's what the team was hoping. And uh, we struggle a bit on the road course, street circuits, but we're really strong on the ovals. Uh, we tried to cure that next season, but uh, it was good for us. And Michel Jourdain Jr. claimed the series' most improved driver award. After qualifying outside the top 20 in the first 10 races, Jourdain rebounded to qualify 8th and 5th in the season's last two races. It's very, very special. And really, because how do they give it to me? Because all the drivers who are really the ones that are closer to me when I'm driving, so they really saw that I improved. Last year when Jimmy Vassar won the championship, he told his teammate Alex Zanardi he could refer to him as Mr. Champion Sir. On Saturday night, Alex returned the favor to Jimmy and he told him he could call him King of the Corkscrew or Mr. Donut Sir. In Los Angeles, I'm Marlo Klein. Thank you, Miss Marlowe reporter, ma'am. Here are the cart money leaders from 1997. Alex Zanardi leading four drivers who won more than one million. His million buck bonus for winning the PPG Cup made Zanardi the only $2 million man. Al Unser Jr., you don't see him on this list. He bumped his earnings to $18.3 million. He's the all-time leading money leader. Made 606 Gs and change this time around. Michael Schumacher started the day with a mirror full of Jacques Villeneuve at the end. Washington speed away with the championship. Derek Bell drops by to lend a little perspective. First, two nights best by question. In the wake of Villeneuve winning the title, who is the first North American driver to win an F1 championship? The answer is coming up. Two nights best by question. Who is the first North American driver to win an F1 championship? The answer? American Phil Hill in 1961. He won a couple of races that year. Mario Andretti won it in 1978 with the Canadian Bill News victory this season. And it's three North Americans to win F1 titles. The man that was everybody's favorite to be the 97 world champion has done it. We're joined now by F1 analyst Derek Bell. And Derek, Jack Villeneuve winning the championship his first and just his second year on F1. It was sort of a long, strange trip to get there, but this is what you want. It comes down to the final race with one point separating Villeneuve and Michael Schumacher. Yeah, it was an outstanding way to finish the season. I must admit, I don't think even Sly Stallone could have uh, sort of typed it that way, but that's the way it came out. Brilliant, I thought. Yeah, uh, Sly Stallone, somebody would have been, you know, throwing things at each other, shooting one another and stuff. This much more drama. As far as the uh, race itself, the Grand Prix of Europe, Villeneuve going into that turn, made their good move on Schumacher and then got bumped there by Michael. Yes, the, Michael obviously had a problem with his car. We don't know what it is at this point, but Michael, I thought, turned in and gave him a little bit of a nudge. We all felt that. And in fact, the stewards have been in discussion ever since the race and have come out with the unanimous decision that there was nothing, no, it was just a normal racing act, action, that was all it was, so there's just, no further action to be taken. Just one of them racing deals, as we That's like to say is, around yeah. here, right? As you look back over this F1 season, uh, what are some of the high points in, in your mind? Well, I thought, uh, you know, the ups and downs of the Williams team, I think, was, the, was probably the highlights of the season, the way they came through, ups and downs, they didn't finish as many races as they should, they should have dominated it, I think they were a little bit complacent after Australia, they thought it was all going to fall into place. And then I think the strength of the Ferraris, I think the fact that McLaren Mercedes came back, 
I just think it was a very intriguing season. I mean, we saw five different drivers win Grand Prix, and that's pretty unusual. So it shows that it's getting much more competitive, aren't we? Wrapping this thing up, uh, with all the controversy that surrounded Villeneuve throughout the season and the points being taken away before the final race from the race in Japan, what does it say about Jacques Villeneuve that he was able to come back and win the championship? Well, it shows just the strength and the competitiveness of the guy. I mean, you know, mid-season, we're all not writing him off, but saying, what's happened to this guy? He can't stand the pressure. He's withstood so much pressure. He's come through it all with really with flying colors. The pressure's been on from the press, the, from the organizers, the stewards. They banned him. They tried everything they could. And the guy almost walked out in Japan and said, I've had enough of this. I want to go home. But he stuck it in there. And the guy comes through this weekend. He had a cold. He wasn't feeling too special. With the pressure on him, he went out there. Even then, he was behind Michael. And he must have wondered, what have I got to do to win? And unfortunately, it was Michael. Michael that made the error, which, which gave Jack the championship, if that's the right way to put it. And certainly, Jack Villeneuve feels special. Now, Derek, thanks so much for joining us. Always a pleasure. RPM tonight. We'll be back right after the break. Malaysian crash. Oh, dear me. What a ride. Oh, oh my goodness. Huge crash. Huge for crash. Olivier Panis. Goodness gracious. He's had a big crash there. Damon Hill's going down the inside. He's taking the second. Derek, I cannot believe it. Damon Hill has taken the lead on lap 11 of the Hungarian. No, oh that's Villeneuve. Oh, Villeneuve is stunned coming out of the chicane onto the pit straight. I don't believe it. Michael goes behind Brother Ralph. No. It, it, it was Michael. It was certainly Ralph that hit Michael, that's for sure. Pushed him off. Look oh, at him. look oh, at that. Oh, my goodness. He really did. He didn't just tap Michael's car. He beat the heck out of the front. There, race leader, no longer tragedy for the Finn Mika Hakkinen. That is a titanic engine failure and that was on lap 53 of 59 our congratulations to Jacques Villeneuve the entire Williams Renault team and Renault also the winner of the day the world championship RPM tonight is being brought to you by head and shoulders because great hair can't have flakes now back to Reese Davis well, thanks to Mother Nature wreaking havoc on the racing schedule, John Kernan's going to need a little something extra in his paycheck. Monday night at 7 o'clock, NHRA running, and of course, we go to The Rock for the AC Delco 400. Bobby Labonte on the pole for that one. John and the gang will have a complete wrap for you on RPM tonight, every weeknight at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. You can catch that program. We're back with you Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time and Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And then RPM today, a little bit of an early start, so go ahead and mark that calendar, set the VCR, whatever you like to do, 10 a.m. Eastern Time for RPM today. That's going to do it for us. I'm Reese Davis, Jack Villeneuve, the F1 champion. We'll see you later.